Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidolph. There I am, with Ringo in the latest Draw with Rob. Build a story book. Now I'm a children's author and illustrator. Maybe you've seen some of my books before. This one is called Wide Awake. It's part of my Dinosaur Juniors series. This is a very good one for bedtime. As it says, the perfect rhyme for sleepy time. Because it's all about, there's some twin dinosaurs in the Dinosaur Juniors. Um, Otto and Winnie, here we go. The light fades with the setting sun. This dino twosome's day is done. Nice clean faces, sparkling teeth and cozy quilts to lie beneath. Beneath, can't say beneath. Once upon a moonlit night, a kiss from mum. Sweet dreams sleep tight. The brightest stars, the stillest lake. <gasps> but somebody is wide awake, so it tells the story of Winnie, who cannot get to sleep, and her twin brother Otto tries all sorts of things to help her get off to sleep. So it's a really good one for your little ones if they have trouble getting to sleep. We've even got a spread here. Look, a bit of a sheep counting spread. Bar bar dinos, leaping balls of wool. Counting sheep is wonderful. So your children can count their sheep. Might help them drop off to sleep. Maybe you've seen my latest book. It's called Dog Gone, all about Teddy the Pug, who loses his human on a walk. Where are we? Where are we? Look, <gasps> Dave wasn't there. He's lost his human on a walk and he has to see if he can find him. That's a really fun one. But we are here today, as per usual, to do a little drawing together. And today, I thought I would show you how to draw a seahorse. I just think seahorses are incredible animals. Um, so bizarre, actually, aren't they? And I don't know if I've ever seen one in real life. I think I must have. That's an aquarium or something. I've certainly never seen one in the sea. But they are very, very beautiful animals. And I think they are a lot of fun to draw. So we've already drawn a horse, haven't we? So I thought it's only fair that we draw a seahorse too. Um, and why are they called seahorses? I think just because they look a bit like horses. But they're, I don't know what type of, I don't know what you would call them. Are they just a fish? I'm not sure. Do you know what? I'm going to put up a few seahorse facts here in my little education station um, because I forgot to look them up before I started recording this video. So there you go. There's a few little seahorse facts for you. Interesting, huh? Would you have... Who'd have believed that these facts about seahorses? <laughs> right, off you go facts. It's time to start our drawing. You're gonna need a piece of paper. You're gonna need a pen or a pencil. You're gonna need something to color with. This is how Draw With Rob works. Basically, when I do live shows, I always say at the end, hands up who doesn't think they're very, at the beginning, sorry, hands up who doesn't think they're very good at drawing. Lots of hands go up. And I say, well, do you know what? I think everybody can draw. You just, some people just need a little bit of a helping hand with the order. And that's where I come in. So what we're going to do today, we're going to break this drawing of a seahorse down into little tiny bite-sized pieces. So I will draw a shape here. Pause the video, copy what I do, start me up again, I'll draw a bit more. Pause me, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. And we'll end up with a beautiful seahorse at the end of it. Right, shall we start? Okay, let's do this. We're going to start just above centre of our page. We're going to start very simply with a circle. Not too big, not too small. A medium-sized circle. Don't worry if your circle isn't perfect. My circle's not perfect. Do you remember what I say? There's no such thing as a perfect drawing. It's those little happy accidents that make the drawing individual. So don't worry if your circle's not perfect. The next thing we're going to do is, is another circle within our circle. So there we go. And this time we're going to colour it in. So can you guess which part of the seahorse this is? That's right, we are starting with the eye today. So an eye needs eyelashes, doesn't it? So let's just add one, two, three, four, five little eyelashes around this eye. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start drawing the outline of our seahorse's body. So what I want you to do, we're gonna start about here. So sort of halfway up your circle and about a centimeter out, I want you to start tracing another circle, but a bigger one, all the way around here. But we don't want to go all the way around, actually. We're going to stop. Let's stop about there. So stop at about four. If you imagine that's a clock, we're stopping at about four o'clock. Because then what I want you to do, I want you to start curving down the page in a sort of S shape. 
So we're going to go out and we're going to go right down towards the bottom of our page and we're going to come right around like this. We're going to go further out than the top of our head and we're going to go into one of my favourite things, a little curly whirly bit, like that. A lovely curly line. I love drawing curvy lines. My favourite things to draw. And then what we're going to do at the end, we're going to take that to a point and we're going to start tracing our curvy line back out. But we are going to start getting a bit fatter the further out that we go. And then when we get round to this part, we're going to keep quite tight to that edge there. And we're going to go right out. And then we're going to go right back in and we're going to finish underneath the eye, about there. So it's a little bit tricky this. Round we go to there. Okay. Then we're going to turn around and head back off up this way, but we're going to stop before. We don't want to join it up because when we get here, we are going to come out almost at right angles. Then we're going to add a little sort of denty bit at the end like that. Turn around again, then we're going to join it up. So we've created this sort of little trumpet shape, which is going to be our seahorse's mouth. And our seahorse really is starting to take shape now, isn't it? So it is a bit complicated and tricky, but actually it's only a couple of lines that we've drawn. This one is almost like one continuous line. Then we turn around there and then we do the little trumpet. I don't know if it's called a trumpet. I don't know what that part of the seahorse is called, but it looks a bit like a trumpet to me. Right, let's add some decorative bits to our seahorse now. They have this lovely sort of crown or sort of like, um, what do you call it? It's like a sort of, almost like a spine, like my dinosaurs have those sort of spines. It's almost like one of those. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start about here. We're gonna come out at right angles, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a lovely wobbly line that follows the shape of our seahorse all the way round. So very much like, a bit like the plates on the Gregosaurus or the spine on Nancy that we've drawn before. But we're gonna stop about there. So it's almost a bit like a hairstyle. <laughs> and then they have almost like, they look like little wings on their back. And we're gonna do the wings here. They just come out and we do bump, bump, bump. And then we join back up again there in a sort of like a, almost like a triangular shape at the end, but with three bumps on the end like that. And then we'll just add a couple of lines like so. The next thing to do is I want you to just to carry on the curve of the head here just a little bit. So it just sort of carries on a bit like that. And then from this point, we are gonna just follow our curve down and around a little bit and then join it join up with the bottom like so and then just add some horizontal lines across like that it's almost like they have a little sort of tummy area there we go and that's pretty much it for the main part of our seahorse but what i want you to do here we're going to do because the seahorse obviously they live in the water we're going to add a few little bubbles here that just sort of get a bit bigger and actually they gradually turn in to little heart shapes i thought that might be quite cute little heart shaped bubbles they get bigger and bigger as they get further up the page. There we go, our little seahorse. Let's give he or she a little eyebrow, like that. This is a cartoon, after all. And that's how you draw your basic seahorse outline. Now, for the really fun bit, because seahorses, they come in all sorts of different colors and patterns. So the truth is here, you can go crazy. I'm gonna make mine lovely and colorful, I think. And I'm gonna add all sorts of little, I might add some circles in here and on her back, and I might just add lots of different patterns all over. And this is one where you can absolutely go crazy with the colors. I mean, all of the Draw With Robs are beautifully multicolored, aren't they? But this one, I think, is gonna be a super, super pretty one. 
So I'm going to go into super speed mode to do my colouring. I will see you back here in 20 or 30 seconds or so, something like that with a beautifully multicoloured seahorse. So are you ready? Let's do this. Three, two, one. Let's go. There we go, there is my finished seahorse. Very pretty colours, I think. I've gone for some purples and some pinks and some sort of turquoise to kind of offset the purples and the pinks and the warm colours. And I've added, you can see, so there's my little hearts. I've sort of done some bubbly shading in there and I've added loads and loads and loads of little bubbles around my seahorse just to suggest that she is in the water. Now I'm gonna have to go over my little eyelashes now because I've sort of colored over them with my pencil and sometimes that covers up some of the ink and you can't really see the black anymore. So I'll just do that because the eyelashes I think are a very important part of this drawing. Oh, I'm pleased with her. She's very nice, I think, right. Don't forget everybody, you need to sign your drawings. Where shall I sign it? Let's just do a little signature down here. I'll add one of the little swirls to my R of Rob, just like the tail. And there we go. There's my finished seahorse. This is a super exciting one for me to see your drawings, I think, because there's so much potential for color and pattern with our seahorses. And I have faith in you guys. I think you're gonna produce some brilliant, brilliant works of art. So this is what you need to do. You need to get your grown up to take a picture of your seahorse. And then if they post it on social media using this hashtag here, draw with Rob, that's the best way for me to get to see it. And um, I really can't wait, as I said, to see your drawings. Hopefully you've added lots of pattern around the sort of the comb. Is it a comb? It's called a comb on a chicken. Um, you've added some patterns there and maybe on the back and on the tummy and maybe you've done different kinds of bubbles. You know, you know, with these Draw With Rob videos, you never have to copy exactly what I do. It's, the idea is, is, is that this is a starting point for you to go off in your own direction. Um, and of course, with all drawing, there's no right answer. So yes, I can't wait to see what you've done. I hope you've enjoyed this session. I've really enjoyed showing you how to draw a seahorse. I'm gonna be back very soon with another episode of Draw With Rob. In the meantime, everybody, keep on drawing, take care of yourselves, and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye. I'm back and I'm here to tell you about something super exciting. I know lots of you have enjoyed my Draw With Rob activity books. Well, guess what? We've got a brand new one and it's out now and it's called Draw With Rob, Build A Story. And as the title suggests, this one is all about telling you how to build your own stories, how to write them, how to illustrate them. We're gonna think about characters, how to choose your good guys and your bad guys. We're gonna think about where you set your stories, very important, when you set your story. Is it gonna be in the past, set in the past or in the future, present day? Um, we're gonna talk about how to structure your story. We, we need to give it a good beginning, middle and end. What about plot twists? Do unexpected things happen in your story? It's all covered in this book here. And we've also got our regular draw alongs. Loads of draw alongs in this one. Lots of puzzles, lots of coloring. It's super fun. Every single page is perforated. So once you've done your little draw along like this one of a unicorn, you draw it in the frame here and you tear that page out. You stick it up on the wall. That's super cool, isn't it? And guess what? Right at the end, we've even got lots of blank pages like that for you to write your own story and illustrate your own story. And then you can put the whole thing together. Look, you put your own story together like that and then you've made your own book. You don't need me anymore. So listen, I'm super proud of this book. I'm pretty sure you're gonna really, really enjoy it. And guess what? It's out now. You can get it from wherever you buy your books. Okay, so listen, I hope you enjoy it and I'm gonna see you really soon for another episode of Draw With Rob. Bye everyone.